So today I'm going to be giving a crash course on object-oriented programming, uh, sort of a review guide for object-oriented programming. Um, so I'm first going to start by um, asking the question, what, you know, what is object-oriented programming? Why should I care? What are some of the benefits um, and cons that object-oriented programming brings to the table? Um, why, it, um, I would argue, is a better approach towards some of the other approaches that a lot of beginners take? Um, and then also going into some of the basics of what, what is a well-designed object-oriented programming program. Uh, what does that look like? And um, how do we judge uh, what a good object-oriented program is? Um, and some of the sort of behaviors exhibited within um, object-oriented programming programs in general. Um, so I'll first start by saying, okay, what is object-oriented programming? Um, an object-oriented program, it's a programming paradigm. Uh, programming paradigm meaning um, it is a way of structuring a program, a way of structuring a program. It's a way of designing a program, uh, an approach towards programming. Um, and this approach specifically is around the idea of an object. Everything in uh, what we're going to be do dealing with is Ruby. Um, everything in, in Ruby is an object. And these objects communicate with one another. Um, in an object oriented programming, they communicate with one another through interfaces. Um, it's called an interface. This is kind of a logical point in which um, objects are able to communicate with one another. Um, they talk to one another. So this is very um, beneficial um, in terms of sort of grouping things together, organizing things, and simplifying it down. Um, and that was one of the big reasons why people started um, using object-oriented programming is because you're able to make your programs a lot more flexible, a lot more legible, um, and you're reducing the amount of what's called dependencies on, on the little intricacies within a program that things are going to depend on um, where if they aren't explicitly, you know, or I guess little, little areas within a program that if they're not there, um, the whole program crashes. Um, that's what a dependency is, is that it's one thing depending on another thing for information. Um, you want as little as possible of that um, to design a program because that's, that's more risk for error, more risk for something crashing. Um, and you want as little of that as possible. So um, uh, along the lines of what a programming paradigm is, um, a lot of people who start off on, on doing um, programming in general start off with what's called a procedural programming approach or procedural programming paradigm. Um, and this is kind of taking things one by one, step by step. Uh, there isn't really a formal structure as much as it's just, okay, I'm just going to go line by line and, and, and sort of execute whatever's in front of it and then moving on. Um, so I'm first going to start by doing that um, for an example and then doing object oriented, doing an object-oriented programming approach to sort of show you some of the benefits that this really does offer. So this is going to be what's called procedural programming. Or let's say um, I want to have a dog, and I want that dog to have a name. I also want the dog to have an age, and I want to print out its name and age um, to the console. So I'm going to start by defining a local variable dog name. It's going to equal Sparky. And then the name or the age for that dog is going to equal 12. Great. Um, I now want to output the name. Hello, I am. This is going to be dog name. And now I'm going to output the age. I am dog age years old. I run the code and it says, hello, I'm Sparky, I am 12 years old. Great. Um, I also want to have a cat, and I want that cat to have a name. So I'm going to call this Felix, and I want the cat to be 10 years old. And then same thing, I'm going to output this, hello, I am cat name, and I'm going to output hello, uh, or I'm going to say I am K 
cat age years old. So, with that, um, with this procedural programming approach, I have two local variables um, with an explicitly stated dog and an, um, then two local variables with an explicitly stated cat. Um, and both of these are going to be assigned uh, either a name or, or a string uh, for a name or an integer for an age. And then um, after both of those um, states have been set, local variables have been set, I'm outputting the name with a hello I am name um, and then I'm outputting the age as I am age years old. Great, and then um, I have the Felix assigned to the cat name and then I have the age assigned, or the 10 assigned to the cat age. Great, um, so what are some of the problems with this? Uh, well, first off, we don't have an explicitly stated cat. We don't have an explicitly stated dog. Right now we just have two local variables that reference, okay, dog. Great, uh, but there's not an actual dog. Um, and there's really no um, explicit boundary between the cat name and dog name, um, and there really isn't, in terms of structure, uh, a difference between a dog and a cat. They're just two local variables, and both of them have a cat or a dog um, to start them out. Um, and then we're outputting this as sort of just hello, I am, and then we have the cat name uh, explicitly put in there. Um, so, it, you know, it, it works. Um, it's just that this isn't going to work as things get more complex, as we need more organization. Um, we need something that's going to say, okay, this is an actual dog. This is an actual dog's name. This is an actual cat. This is the actual cat's name and its age. And then I want a way to be able to output um, those, those different states of an object um, explicitly, but I don't want to have to do that. I don't, I don't want to have to do it explicitly uh, as in lines 11 and in lines 12 and 5 and 6. We're having to explicitly write down, okay, dog age um, versus cat age uh, or versus, you know, dog name. Like, I want to be able to just output, okay, here's the dog and this is its name. To be able to reference its name and then this gets done for me. There's ways to do that. Um, object-oriented programming is going to deal with that. And I do that by first, I need to separate this dog and, and this cat. They need to be completely different because um, they are different. Uh, and so I'm going to create what's called a class dog. And I'm going to create what's called a class cat. So what I just do here, I've just defined two templates to be able to draw objects from both of those objects um, from this above example um, are going to be a dog and a cat. <clears throat> so essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating what's called a class. And so a class is, is a template for objects to be created from. That creation process is what we call um, instantiation. And so the process of creating an object from a class. <clears throat> so I'm, I want to instantiate a dog object and I want to instantiate a cat object. The dog and the cat are both going to have these different states. And these states are going to be different attributes of the dog or cat. Um, at the moment these are empty, but I'm going to go ahead and create this, this object. So I just need to say, I'm going to say dog is going to equal dog.new. I'm going to say cat is going to equal cat.new. So I've just instantiated two objects, dog and cat. So I'm going to say p dog, p cat. Great. So um, if we look at the very bottom here, we have this dog object and we have this cat object. Both of them are completely separate. Um, so great. And then if I really need, if I needed to, I could say, okay, the dog dot class. If I were trying to reference, you know, what is this? Um, could say that you know, this doesn't always have to be dog. I could say, okay, this is going to be Sparky, um, and this is going to be Felix. Oops. So I'm going to say Sparky. What is Sparky? And what is Felix? 
Well, Sparky is a dog, and Felix is a cat. And we can reference that now explicitly, versus where we couldn't here. We didn't have anything explicit in a procedural programming approach. We just had it, you know, structured. Dog name, dog age, cat name, cat age. Now we have an actual dog, and we have an actual cat. And we've created two objects from both the dog and the cat. So this allows us to be able to do things uh, that we otherwise couldn't. It really allows us to organize um, our code into a way that make that really just make it makes a lot more sense. Um, you know, we have things organized now. We have it put into a container. Um, we'll get a little bit more into what that that means too, because that's another approach, another part of object-oriented programming, as well. But now um, I need to first start with you know finishing up this. Dog, dog ob object and this cat object. <clears throat> Looking at the um, example, we have the dog name, dog age. So I know this object from dog needs to have a name and an age. So how do we keep track of the name of the age? We do it through what's called instance variables. Instance variables are defined within the class and the instance variables they keep track of an object state. So this dog, I'm going to define what's called a constructor method. And when I know I need, well, I'm, instead of doing that, I'm just going to do this for now. So what I've just defined up here is called a constructor. Constructor method. This constructor method takes, um, this is the first method that gets called when you create a new object from whatever class it is. Um, when I didn't have this defined, there was still a constructor method called, it was the default constructor method. Um, that nothing is done within that constructor method, but that is the, the method that gets executed when you create or you, when you instantialize an object from one of these classes. So that's the initialize uh, method, that's, that's what this means um, is that this is a constructor. So what do I want to do when I first create an object? Say we look at Sparky and say we look at Felix. Well I want to be able to define a name and the age right from the start. So I want to pass in the name first. So I want that to be Sparky and I want this to be 12. Um, so what do I do now? So right when we pass in these two parameters into the new method, this is going to be <clears throat> passed into a, <coughs> a constructor method. This construct, this constructor method. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> so I'm going to define the arguments, which is going to be the name and age. So these are the two arguments, and I need these to be assigned to the instance variables for the dog. So to cr to create <clears throat> an instance variable. I need at name is going to equal name, at age is going to equal age. <clears throat> so this at symbol right here is what creates uh, an instance variable. If I didn't have that at, I would only be um, initializing a local variable. This would be creating another local variable specific to this method and only this method. Or, um, not outside the dog class. This can't be referenced from anything else except for within that method. Um, right when I add the at, this turns it into an instance variable. Instance variable can be accessed from the object level. Um, any object that's been instantialized from this dog can access this name and age now. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like a little later. So now when I create this object, I'm going to run the code. We now have dog and cat. It's great, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get rid of this. So now I have name Sparky age twelve. So you can see here that these uh, two states are attached to the dog, um, which is great. So um, I'm gonna do the same thing now for the cat. We're gonna be creating an object for the cat. I'm gonna say okay name and age. I need to initialize the name to equal name, and then the age to 
equal age. All right, so they gave me a wrong number. So I need to pa I need to pass in Felix. So that's the name, and then the age is ten. Great. So now we have down here the cat object. The name is Felix. Age is ten. So now we have two separate objects of dog and cat with the states of Sparky and the states of Felix with an age of 12 um, for Sparky and an age of 10 for Felix. Um, and we can see now that those are attached to these objects. Um, these are specific to the object. If I wanted to, I could create another one. I'll call this Sophia. It's going to equal a cat. So we're going to create another object from the cat class. From that cat template, Sophia is going to be 12 years old. And I'm going to output Sophia. So now we have two objects from the class cat with a name Sophia and an age of 12. Um, and then we have a name of Felix and then an age of 10. Two completely separate states. Um, same class, same type of object. You know, um, we know that Felix and Sophia are both cats, but you know they're, they're different objects. So we can create that um, separation. That's something that we can't do with the procedural programming. I can't really have multiple dogs unless I did dog one name or dog two name uh, or dog two. Or dog one name and age, and even if I'm doing that, I'm really just setting different types of local variables. You know, and this can obviously get to be very confusing very quick, especially as a program grows in size. So that's the the big benefit behind it. And, and if you know, you know, if I were to create another um, dog, I would have to do more specifications on okay, if dog two age or name is going to equal Felix. Dog two age is going to equal ten, and then I do all the output. You know, this this can obviously get to be very confusing very quick, and there isn't a lot of structure as compared to the object oriented approach. So that's one of the big benefits um, behind object oriented programming is um, legibility, uh, structure, also flexibility. I can do a lot more. Um, you know, as you saw, it wasn't very difficult for me to create another cat object with a different name and age, uh, versus how it would be for me to create another object in a procedural programming approach uh, with a name and an age. And as we begin to create more and more sort of states, like say I wanted an owner, um, it's going to equal. I need that to be specified. Obviously, that you know, this can get very confusing very quick from a procedural programming approach. So that's that's the big benefit of object-oriented programming.